Hello, I'm the Media Wiz, because one art form wasn't enough, and since November has usually been gaming themed on my show for the last few years, let's continue that tradition this year. And we're going to start by talking about a show about video games. I promise the other reviews after this are going to be about video games, but for today, we're going to be talking about Da Boom Crew. The Boom Crew was an animated series on Kids WB back in 2004, created by Bruce Smith, mostly known for the Disney Channel classic The Proud Family, which was a wonderful blend of hilarious humor, great characters, and good writing. But whereas that series lasted a solid two seasons and even got a TV movie, this show only had 13 episodes and only four were aired in the US. There were plans for a second season, but due to low viewership, that clearly went nowhere. So let's see what happens when you try to make Captain N the Game Master for the 2000s urban and hip and cool scene. This is Da Boom Crew. We begin by being thrown into the action with four kids fighting slime monsters on some far off distant planet. Those kids being Justin, the leader, his brother Nate, Jubei, the skater dude, and Ricky, the engineer. Nate, you gotta hurry up and get that game cartridge. This space creature's out of control. Cart, as in like cartridge, like NES cartridge. If that's the case, then why does it look like a floppy disk? Like, I'm not crazy, right? That looks more like a floppy disk than a cartridge. I I'm not the only one that sees this. Holla! Jube! Where you at, dog? <laughs> Gnarly half pipe. Ugh. Okay. You know how certain shows from around that time were really dated? I mean, go back and rewatch something like... I don't know, Kim Possible. The dialect in that show was really dated, but it's still a very entertaining series. Not only is this show not entertaining, but it feels outdated even in the year it was made. Tony Hawk and later, homie. You know, we can say what we want about this show, but eh, at least it's slightly better than Tony Hawk's endeavor into animation with Boom Boom Sabotage. I can't reach it. I can't reach it? What do you mean? It's right there. You just have to reach over into the other hand and grab it. Okay, okay. Nate is able to stop the robot and nab the cartridge. Before faking out the audience that he's about to go over a cliff, we then jump into the theme song. I want to take this time to talk about how you properly do a first episode and how this show screws it up. Typically, there's one of two ways you can do a first episode. One, have an episode that introduces us to the main characters by showing us how they meet and or end up in the situation that's going to play out through a majority of the series. Or two, don't introduce us to everything right off the bat, but slowly introduce certain things over the course of the first few episodes. This show doesn't do either. Instead, they try to jam-pack all the backstory into the theme song. All it really comes down to is four kids who play video games got sucked into a world that looks a lot like their game, and they have to take on various bad guys, save the galaxy, and I'm assuming get home at some point. We created our own video game where we play heroes battling outer space villains, and all of our adventures are on these boom cards. But one day we were sucked up by a supernatural vortex and dropped into a world identical to our game. And now for the theme song, which is a really lame rock rap song that makes even Puff Daddy's song for the Godzilla soundtrack sound good. Back with these guys, the gang successfully pulls Nate back to safety, and they stop the slime monsters. No wonder that puddle of ooze turned into a blob squad. This game cartridge threw the whole planet out of whack. The planet? Our boom carts have thrown this entire galaxy out of whack. And we know this how? Seriously, this is the first episode and stuff like that never gets a proper explanation. It's like there was a pilot episode that they didn't air before this one that explains stuff like that. After that, we cut over to the show's main antagonist, Zorch. He's your typical power-hungry space tyrant, a la Darth Vader, who spends most of his time looking out the window menacingly while... his two bumbling sidekicks do his dirty work. Those two bumbling sidekicks being Jerome and Headlock. Why he's called that, I don't know. He never really does a headlock in this, so, eh, whatever. Zorchi baby! What's crackin' lackin'? I would say it's kind of like the Sonic cartoon with Robotnik scratching Grounder, but no, here's a better comparison. It's like the Bubsy cartoon. And oh look, they're planning on taking over the world on the side and possibly backstabbing Zorch. Enough of that, back with the kids. As soon as I bring the Astro Navigator back online, I'll figure out where the heck we are. But I'm going to require an interfaceable corrective implement. Oh, wrench, you lug nuts! Mm, I got a solar saw. Platonic pliers. Wait, what? 
Platonic flyers. But, but that's a wrench. Did the animators and designers seriously mix up a pair of pliers with the thing that the characters have been talking about this whole scene? The group then lands on another distant planet and are soon attacked by this knockoff wild mutt from Ben 10. And while the animation has had a few minor errors here and there, here's one that I find the most bizarre. During the fight scenes, the backgrounds always become these weird supersonic speed pocket dimension looking things. It feels like they either wanted to make it look cool or they were just lazy with the backgrounds. And this goes for other episodes where backgrounds either don't match or go way faster than the way the characters are moving. And there's also plenty of times where the characters are saying things but their lips aren't moving. I don't know, maybe they learned ventriloquism from Revolta. Anyway, after that, the group then comes face to face with... Get back, I'm running you, mutant tree scum! You kill a trick, brave Commander Blurp! With your lies, you more of those pod monstrosities! Stereotypical Frenchman alien. Okay. Bob the Butler, the MST3K comic, What's Up Balloon to the Rescue, and now this. Is French stereotypes just gonna become a thing in my MediaWiz videos now? With a boom crew from planet Earth. Excuse me, one moment. Ah, that hurt! Where was I? Okay, fair is fair. That was actually kind of funny. Frenchie takes them to the cave where he lives and explains how he ended up there. His people went to war against Zorch once he tried to take over their planet, and they lost. Hey! Go easy, Blur! <laughs> It's true! I scare easily! And he's a coward. It's cause he's French, get it? By the way, audience, here's a game for you. Take a shot every time you see a Da Boom Crew logo in the background. It's not cool, it's not funny, it's not a neat easter egg. It's as if they were trying to remind the audience of what show they were watching. The gang then gets attacked by these giant eggplant looking things with tentacles, but they're soon distracted by... Space Jerky. Don't look at me, I'm not the one that made it. So Headlock and Jerome find the coordinates of the kids who begin heading off into a spooky looking forest which naturally scares Frenchie, leading the fat kid to try and give him a pep talk. When I barreled into my first tube, the wave was so aggro I wanted to bail. But I cowboyed up and shot the pocket. What I'm trying to say is, sometimes you just gotta surf on. Know what I'm saying? Of course! Wait. What are you saying? And the one-off French alien character is still the best character in the whole show so far. The gang is soon surrounded by these Pokemon-looking rejects, as well as Headlock's robot bug army. As another fight scene then breaks out, Headlock and Jerome make off with one of the cartridges. Our work here is done. As soon as I collect the rest of you babies, I have supreme command of the galaxy. You guys have one out of God knows how many of these cartridge things there are. You guys aren't done yet. Man, I thought the Grim Creeper was an early celebrator. One down, four to go. That, that is preemptive celebrating at its finest. As you'd expect, Frenchie faces his fears and is able to turn the monsters against the robot bug army, and the gang leave the dynamic dumbasses tied up with duct tapes around their mouths. Zorch swears vengeance, the kids are declared heroes on the French alien's planet, and they get some new gear, including a new hoverboard, a robot sidekick, and a new lightsaber. We're done here. As for some of the other episodes of the show, it's basically just more of the same. Kids go to a different planet, have to help the alien communities in need, take on villains, along with some new one-off bad guys each episode, meet some new faces, get the planet restored, and the animators find a way to reuse animation as much as they can. So that was Da Boom Crew, and yeah, it's, it's not good. Is this one of the worst shows I've ever looked at? Well, it's bad, but I was far from angry while watching it. It's not offensively bad like Pope Town or Slim Shady Show. It wasn't trying to be preachy like the Groovenians. It wasn't ruining a childhood classic show of mine like Preschool Days. And it's not trying too hard to be gross like Brothers Grunt. What it is trying too hard to be is cool, with the constant urban wannabe gangsta slang, the characters are all one note, most of the jokes and references are either dated or unfunny, and while the plot is cliched, it probably could have worked if it was in the hands of better writers. And lastly, for a first episode, the only thing that got a proper explanation was how the cast got sucked into the game world to begin with. Other things just feel like afterthoughts with barely any explanation, even in later episodes. In a way, I kinda recommend this show for people who like to laugh at extremely dated television. I mean, if you want to laugh at a show that was basically a poor attempt at mixing the Proud Family and Scooby-Doo in the Cyber Chase, I highly recommend checking this show out if you can find it. I'm the Media Wiz, because one art form wasn't enough.